Hey everybody, this is my thoughts on Planet Diver. This is an indie arcade action game by Fabraz, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, I hope I am anyway, that was released on December 1st of last year, so it's actually a pretty recent game, and it's just kind of flown under the radar. In fact, I didn't know this game existed until the developers contacted me and were like, hey, would you like to cover our game on your channel? And I figured, sure, why not? So thank you to the developers for sending me a copy of this game to take a look at. But I do have to readily admit, this isn't really my kind of game. It's not to say it's a bad game or anything, it's just not really my kind of thing. So just keep that in mind as I go through this and just give you my general thoughts on it and whether or not you might want to pick it up. So as far as the presentation goes, it is all done in pixel art, and generally speaking, the pixel art's actually pretty good. There's a bunch of decent particle effects going on, except there's a few portraits when the characters are talking that don't look quite as good as the rest of it, and that's a bit jarring, particularly when you have this really nice uh, picture of the actual character that you're playing pop up on occasion in the menus and then you go into the actual game and she's sitting there in this much more lo-fi version. It's slightly jarring. Luckily these particular portraits are only showing up at the beginning of the story mode levels. So it's not really that big of a deal. It's just kind of a mild annoyance more than anything else. The only other major complaint I have with the visuals is the fact that with the various creatures and such that you see in the environments, it's actually rather hard to tell exactly what they are until the game actually tells you what they are. I mean, it's not like that really makes too much of a difference, but it is a mild annoyance. And then we come to the sound design, which is pretty limited. You have music and sound effects and really nothing else. In a lot of ways, the sound effects scream classic arcade game, and the music itself, while very, very limited, because there's only a handful of tracks really throughout the game, is really catchy and works out in the game's favor. Although it does get kind of tiring hearing the same song over and over and over again when you're going with a specific planet, because the music actually changes depending on which planet you're on or whether or not you have purchased one in the store using your star stuff. Which I will of course get to in a moment, but the point being, the music selection is very limited, so even though it is catchy, it does get old. And the same thing pretty much goes with the sound effects as well, although they are certainly alright and they again give that nice arcade vibe, they do get old because you're hearing the exact same ones over and over and over again. That said, this isn't exactly the kind of game where you would want to play it for hours and hours and hours on end. It's more the kind of game that you engage in for short bursts of activity and then you come back to it later. Because when you get down to it, the game itself is rather simple, it's pretty much a casual game, and more importantly, it is done in a format that is generally rather short and much better for just short periods of play than simply just playing it for hours on end. You play as a daredevil whose new obsession is wingsuit diving into very deep caverns. And that's pretty much it. While there is a story mode, I didn't play through it all the way, and what I played of it was basically just confirming exactly that. You're a daredevil, you're doing daredevil things. And so it goes to the gameplay to pick things up from there, and what you have here is a very simple arcade style game, in in which you move back and forth on a horizontal plane while you are moving in the vertical plane in order to dodge obstacles, get star stuff, which are the gold dots you see me picking up throughout the footage, and on occasion destroying various cave creatures that you will run into. Now it does get more complicated than that because each level has three different objective tiers. You have bronze, silver, and gold, and each of these have both objectives as well as different payouts. Now the payouts are of course in star stuff, which is basically the in-game currency, but when you're actually collecting it in the level, it gradually heals you if you get a certain amount, and so the more you collect, the better. But it gets to be more than just that. Sometimes the objectives are simply get to this particular amount of depth, or survive this long without getting hit, or collect this amount of star stuff, or destroy these particular enemies in this particular way. So that helps to add some variety to what you're doing, because what you are doing effectively is moving in a horizontal plane between various vertical lanes one at a time in order to avoid obstacles, collect items, whatever. And you are pressing down in order to give yourself a speed boost which can allow you to destroy enemies if you're close enough to hit them with full speed. 
or hitting up in order to flip backwards in order to avoid obstacles and slow down. So while there is nuance in timing your various maneuvers so they are just right in order to get the maximum combos and the maximum amount of bang for your buck basically, you're still dealing with some very simplistic core gameplay that is really just built upon in the various things as they add on to it, which is done through of course the mission structure as well as the various bonuses and such that get applied to you via the level parameters as well as being imposed upon the game through you going through the uh, in-game shop in order to find these various power up, power down kind of things that will change the way the game plays out. And on top of the variety through this, there are also boss fights that you can engage in. Now, I can't actually speak for those because I didn't get a chance to play any of them. Oddly enough, I kept going through the uh, earliest planet that you can go through and I never really ran into one. It said there are several of them, but they seem to be fairly late in the story progression. And as far as I can tell, it's basically just taking the core mechanics and spinning them in such a way that you can actually fight the final boss of that particular area. So again, that adds some variety, but you're still dealing with these very simple core mechanics. The point being, if you are not into the core mechanics, you are probably not going to get anything at all out of the game. That's not to say it's a bad game. In fact, for what it is, it's very well made. It's just that this isn't exactly for everyone, myself included. This is not really my kind of game. It may be your kind of game, and if it is, you'll be able to get a hell of a lot more out of it than I did. What I basically look at this as is a sort of time waster game. It's the kind of game you go into for a few minutes at a time when you're waiting on something to finish downloading, or waiting for something to finish compiling and you don't want to tax your hardware, or something like that. It's a quick, casual, fun kind of game. And if that's your thing and you like this sort of, I guess, lane runner kind of gameplay, you will probably be able to enjoy this a fair bit. But don't go into it expecting some sort of ultra deep gameplay that you can just play for hours and hours and hours on end without getting bored of it, because that's not really what this is designed for. That's not to say it's lacking in content or anything, there are quite a lot of levels in this and you have both the story and the arcade mode to mess around with. And there's unlockables, there's different costumes that you can get, all these different gameplay modifiers that you can unlock. And so it does give you quite a bit of bang for your buck, so to speak, especially considering that this game is actually pretty cheap. At its normal price on Steam right now, it is $4 US, and it's currently on sale as I'm making this video for $2. So it's both very affordable, and again, if this is your kind of thing, a lot of bang for the buck. If anything, I just wish that I could get into this thing more than I do. I don't really get into it very much because it's just not my kind of game. But even it not being my kind of game, I still manage to get some enjoyment out of it, at least for the time that I spent in it. I might go back to it every so often if I have a few minutes to just mess around with something or I'm waiting on something to finish downloading or compiling or something like that. But as far as playing it for upwards of an hour like I do with most of the games I play, I don't really see that happening too much. But again, I don't really think that's what this is designed for, so it actually works out okay in the long run. If this looks interesting to you, I will have a link in the video description box to where you can pick it up on Steam if you're interested. Thanks for watching.